Hello, I'm Stephen Roy Goodman, host of Higher Education Today, a production of the University of the District of Columbia. The purpose of this program is to connect you to contemporary issues, people, institutions, and organizations involved in the business of higher education in our nation and the world. Today we'll be talking about transitions for students who either commute or live away from, at college, transitions from college to young adulthood, and transitions back to school for adults. My guests are two well-known higher education ex authors and experts. Carol Kristen is author of the best-selling book, What Color Is Your Parachute? for teens. She's a career advisor in California who specializes in life and work planning and career change. Carol is a Phi Beta Kappa graduate of UCLA and has assisted participants at the Parachute International two-week workshop. Andrea Lyman is a clinical psychologist in Maryland who, along with yours truly, wrote College Admissions Together, It Takes a Family. In her private practice and in the classroom, Andrea examines underlying family dynamics that can impact both students and young adults. She is a graduate of the University of Pennsylvania and currently teaches at the University of Maryland. Let's get right to it. Um, and welcome to both of you. Thank you so much for Thank having you. me. Sure. Um, well, I guess, Carol, if I could just start with you. Why did you write What Color Is Your Parachute? And what is it about? And I know it's part of a series. And what's the purpose of, of, of your work and sharing your thoughts about What Color Is Your Parachute? Well, the quick answer to that is I wrote the book because I was asked to. Phil Wood, who is the publisher of What Color Is Your Parachute, said, um, I'd like it translated uh, to a younger reading audience. And I think I waited until he'd finished that sentence before I said yes, because I have worked with young people in transition from school to work, whether that's high school, community college, um, prison, uh, higher education, whatever. And my field is finding out how to help young people transition successfully. So I was just delighted to have this. Um, Parachute itself was written by Richard Nelson Bowles, and what he did in the early 70s was to ask to find the people who were most successful at either getting a new career or um, helping people. And so Parachute is based on a success model, and I did the same thing. I interviewed about 500 young people when I started, and then melded my own experience and learnings. Got it. And, and so in your view, is there a, uh, a difference between kind of career planning globally and, and job seeking? Um, not much is the real answer. Um, any good career planning, career change, or job hunt asks the same questions. What are your skills and interests? Where are you going to find jobs that match them? And how are you going to get one? You do some different activities um, depending on how focused the person is. About 25% of the people don't want to do what they've done before. So then you have to really bring out the career um, change instruments. But the basics of both is actually the same. But you mentioned change. And, 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 and Andrea, I know that's the, your, your specialty is change and, and transitions and, and stress. Um, would you mind saying a word or two about you know, how you look at transitions and stress and, and globally and then perhaps how to minimize the stress on that? Absolutely. Um, transitions occur normally for everybody. Uh, we call them life cycle events for people, whether it's births, marriages, deaths, uh, moving away to college, moving from college to a career. Those are all transitional, normal experiences that everybody goes through at some point. Um, and it's how people manage them is, that's crucial. But it's, I think, important for people to understand that there are stressful issues that related to every kind of transition that one goes through. And is there a way to kind of minimize that stress? If, if you know that you're going to go through those life cycle events, I mean, how do you, do you plan for those? Or? Um, many of them, obviously, you can. Uh, when people get married, they hopefully are doing planning. And certainly, one of the reasons the book was written was to help people plan for that transition, both parents sometimes having empty nests at home, but mostly for students going from uh, adolescence into young adulthood. And uh, stress often involves a lot of fear of the unknown. I mean, the transition is we don't know what's going to happen mm -hmm. ahead of us. And one of the ways of managing it is getting as much information as you can. And that is part of the college admissions experience, is right. gathering data. Um, also understanding that you need a support group. And often, where somebody gets that support group is crucial, from their family, from their friends. Sometimes it's through a mental health professional um, that also can help people go through transitions. 
But what, let's, say, let's play off what you just said for a second. In terms of the, in terms of the support, let's say you don't have the support. Right, or let's say you want to try a new career that no one in your family is in, you know, has ever thought of or done. Uh, you're going to, of course, have, there's going to be some friction there, right? You're going to say, I'm interested in being an actor or an actress, but no one in your family has that experience. How do you handle that situation? As a person who's wanting to go into that career, um, clearly getting information, talking to other people who have that career or have gone to college before, uh, knowing who has experienced different kinds of uh, reactions to transitions. One of the things we know about stress and transitions is that it's unique to everybody. Um, how I may anticipate going off to college or having a career in the arts may be different than how somebody else is going to perceive that and emotionally experience it. So you really want to know how you've dealt with past transitions and say, gee, what are my strengths? What are my weaknesses? I can anticipate that my strengths maybe I can use moving forward into another New, new phase of my life and to learn how to avoid the weaknesses right. that showed up earlier in my life as well. And if I could ask you the same question, Carol, uh, you know, in terms of if you're giving people advice on getting a new job about something they don't know, and to play off of what Andrea was saying, let's assume that, you know, you're getting the information, you're still stressed about it because it's hard. Mm -hmm. How do you advise uh, people to deal with that? So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm moving in one direction, I want to go somewhere else, and I don't really know much about it, so I'm, I'm, I'm stressed about it, and I'm getting pressure from my family, uh, many of whom in my family, let's say, don't even support that, 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 that transition. How do you advise people about that? Um, one of the first things is for them not only to talk with other people, both who've been successful, and if you can find them, those who <laughs> haven't been successful, because you can learn a lot there. But sometimes, people, especially young people, are a little resistant. I've got to do this myself. And one of the first things mm -hmm. we try to feed into them is, no, you don't. If you can connect that person with a mentor, then that mentor is, of course, someone they look up to. And when the mentor says, and now we've got to find four or five people for you to talk with, that is sometimes the push and the successful push for getting enough information um, so that we fill in, it's not the unknown anymore, we know that it's the known. The other thing that works so well is to find people who've done it in so many different ways. So if you talk to 10 people, you're almost going to find 10 different mm -hmm. routes in there. Mm -hmm. And then the person can say, okay, this part's closer to how I, from where I'm coming from, but I want to end up more like this person. So then you create a strategy for how you're going to do it. Mm -hmm. But what does a student do who doesn't have those resources? You have. If, well, there's two things. If they don't feel that that's important, if they can go, if they feel, I'm going to do this on my own, boy, that's tough. It's just really tough. Right. Uh, and we wish them well. If they don't have those resources, then you create them by looking at your contacts, who are the people who are positive in your life. But you also tend to need someone who's not going to give you a lot of BS because when you're changing careers or when you're job hunting, this is not the time to engage in self-delusion. So I have a list of um, attitudes and attributes that I give out to young people and say, try and find a mentor who is like this. And then that's kind of a career coach mentor for them. Mm -hmm. And that's their point to person. If you hit a really stressful point, that person is who you go to. If they're not working directly with a career person, which not a lot of people can afford to do. Right, right, right. But I mean, it's an interesting point that you mentioned about, about going out and, and, and trying to decide whether or not something is del delusional or if it's <laughs> realistic. Um, and if I could throw that to you, Andrea, I mean, how would you, as a psychologist, um, what happens when somebody says to you, well, I, I'm interested in politics, but I, I will take nothing less than governor or senator? Um, you know, nothing less. Right. Uh, what do you do? Right. Well, chances are, if they're coming to me, there may be some other underlying issue that's motivating their delusion and their concerns about what real, what's realistic. Mm -hmm. But certainly, um, the job of either mental health professional or certainly family and friends, mm -hmm. mentors, other professionals, is help somebody understand, well, why is it so important to you that you have to be governor? Are there steps that you can go through? Are there things that in the past you've had to take steps in order to get there that you can't go from A to Z, that there are actually progressive uh, activities that you have to engage in? Um, what is the fear of failure, perhaps, that if I don't get to the top, I'll never get there, and therefore I can only start at the top. 
Um, there are lots of personality attributes. I was alluding to that before about everyone deals with stress, transition, mm -hmm. goal setting, careers, very much uniquely to how their personality is set up. And so certainly a goal of a mental health professional in that context would be to understand what are their personality traits. Again, what are their strengths that you can play to their strengths? What are their weaknesses so you can help them avoid needing to be at the top before they're ready to get there? But is, is, there, a, is there a role in luck? Uh, I mean, what happens if a young person says to you, Andrea, um, you know, I understand the planning and I respect that but I can really do it. I know I can really do it, and you know, my great uncle uh, <laughs> once ran for governor in Montana, mm -hmm. and, uh, and I can do mm -hmm. it too. Mm -hmm. How do you respond, and, and, and I think right. I can be lucky. Right, well I think we're both dealing with um, people that sometimes need reality checks, and sometimes the reality check is in one direction, which is you really can't trust and rely on something happening but it also could be a reality check that actually you have a better chance than you think of getting into a college or going into a career and what is keeping you from having that mm -hmm. reality check and that you help people understand, again, what are their strengths, what can right. they play to, um, so that luck doesn't have to be their, their card that they play. Right. Well, I, I find it's interesting, your point is really interesting about some people need to be encouraged to look at other things and other people need to be encouraged to look even more broadly. Uh, and uh, I was hoping that maybe you could say a word or two about that, Carol, because I, I know you did, your whole book is pretty much about that in yeah. terms of encouraging people to go beyond where they were. So I don't want this to just be a message to our viewers that says, well, you know, you can't be governor. <laughs> you know, yes, a couple people want to be governor and probably won't get to be governor, unfortunately, but there are probably a lot more people out there who, who are saying, you know, I've never thought about that. It would be great if I could do that. What an interesting idea. I'd love to explore that career or that path. Maybe you could say a word or two about that. Well, one thing is that there's always, when people take the time to research, um, what can I do with my interest in politics? What can I do with my interest in becoming a governor? There's almost always more there than anyone thinks when before they've started that research. So the more we can get them information, um, there's an adult decision-making model that says the reason people can't make a decision usually, unless they want the problem, of course, is that they don't have enough information. So we really want to get them information. But one of the things you have to ask someone who's willing to base their life on luck, how much risk are you willing to take? because sometimes someone thinks that they uh, you want a job, pretty risky, and then you actually tar start talking about risk and they, they back off a little bit. But my experience with young people, and this is both teens and young adults without much job experience, if you don't go to where they are, their assumption about me is that I can't help them. And so what I found is let's go straight towards governor Let's just see everything you'll have to do to do that. Rock star the same way, skateboarding champion the same way, whatever it is, they want to be the next Beyonce. We're going to go straight to see how you can do that. Because what's neat is along the way they start to see all the other work that happens around that. And then it's not necessarily just saying, you know, you need a day job, but sometimes those are the things that really pull them in their strengths. And they can do that with just a little extra, maybe a class or two here, and then they've got a foothold. I know a number of young actors who have become sound technicians mm -hmm. because it helps pay their SAG uh, dues, and then they're right there where stuff is happening. Um, so they've got an in that they didn't and wouldn't have if they were just right. the card-carrying SAG young actor, actress turning up at all the, the cattle calls. I think that's very good advice. Um, can you go in a little deeper onto that, if you don't mind? I mean, so, so what are some specific tips, and you can even hold up your book, if oh, you'd like. Yeah. Um, you know, what are some specific tips that, that are in there specifically on this? Because I think this is a really interesting point. So I, I want to be a rock star, I want to be a governor, uh, and you're suggesting, okay, let's go ahead and have that discussion, um, and let's see things along the way. So if you can even give some more tips, if you wouldn't mind, that would oh, be great. Sure.